<laughs> Th thank you for that wonderful note and uh, greetings to all around. I really congratulate Dr. Bansi for this extraordinary efforts of DiCareCon and putting me forward to this uh, wonderful topic of Lantidra. So like Dr. Dharmendra mentioned about, there are three pillars of learning. So when we learn, then when we execute, and when we teach the expert, that is another performer. So I believe in training the all around and learning from that. And this is what is a wonderful interaction we'll build on to. So now hope this is audible. Yes. So uh, Lentidra, the topic has been uh, too touchy to me when I completed my MD. I, I, I look forward the uh, advanced technology and therapies and I, I moved to UBMD for fellowship and then Dr. Dendon enrolled me to Edmond Protocols and Edmond uh, Alberta for the same. And then we came back and we went through this. So there are plenty of contributors for this talk and that's where Lentidra focus and this is one of the FDA first release for Lentidra. So what is Lentidra? Uh, released in FDA approval in March 8th, 2024, recent advances. It's allogenic pancreatic islet cell cellular suspension for portal vein infusion. It is also known as Donicel VX880 and specifically allogenic stems, stem cells derived fully differentiated insulin producing islet cells. So what are the indications? What is specific indication for the same? So it is indicated for the treatment of adult type one individual where intensive diabetes management and education is not able to approach the target A1C because of recurrent episodes of severe hypoglycemia. And that's where how it works. So administered infusion into hepatic vein, po hepatic portal vein designed to restore pancreatic islet cells. How le these Lentidra cells intended to affect two. So see, sends the blood glucose level like our islets, then produce and secrete insulin and regular blood glucose level in this. So the aim is to restore natural insulin production and glycemic control. To further note ahead, the primary indication I'm repeating again, the adults type one, specifically on despite of intensive diabetes management and education, not able to approach the target A1C due to recurrent repeated episodes of severe hypoglycemia. So criteria of hypoglycemia is level three of hypoglycemia or hypoglycemic unawareness. But there are limitation of uses of this Lentidra, specifically well-controlled type one diabetes where it is the risk and benefit ratio to be looked into. Patient with hypoglycemia unawareness, but could be well controlled using the intensive diabetes management and able to prevent recurrent severe hypoglycemia in that line. Then the individuals have previous portal thrombosis or even the liver disease or the renal transplant in the background. So what are the eligibility criteria? 18 to 65 years of age, type one for more than five years of duration, then history of severe hypoglycemia along with failed to achieve glycemic control and with the standardized treatment and impaired awareness of hypoglycemia. So these are basic patient eligibility. But we look into the treatment protocol. There are specific aspects involved into it. It's not only the transplant, but it is finding the cadaveric pancreatic procurement, lentidra man manufacturing, patient screening and preparations, infusion of lentidra cells, immunosuppression regimes, and close monitoring and follow-ups to these individuals. Here we see the cadaveric pancreas is taken care then screening and ex acceptance of verifications, then uh, decontaminations, perfusions, digestions, tissue purifications, even islet culture and qualitative assessment of formulations, and then transplanting back to type one individual who, who is a recipient for the same. So the procedure, how it is different from UIC protocol to admin protocol. Yes, we have heard admin protocol plenty of time. But with a short notice, this UIC protocol got approved. That's also in the background of how it is better than Edmond. So it's on five parameters, immunomodulatory regimes, islet purifications, intrahepatic islet transplantations, as well as reduced islet cell mass is able to achieve the insulin nerve status and steroid-free maintenance immunosuppressions. 
So this is the five background where UIC protocol is much more better to Edmund protocol. So this is one of the paper published how brittle type 1 diabetic using the UIC protocol in islet cell transplantation has benefit. So UIC protocol grouped review fewer islets compared to Edmund. So requirement of islets from the donor were less in the mass required to and all pas uh, patients received insulin independence, normal HbA1c level achieved and the significance of significantly reduction in the hypoglycemia has been seen around. So what are the dosage? 500 equivalent islet cell numbers, islet numbers per kilogram for the individual for the initial transfusion. Then if subsequent transfusion is tried then 4500 and the maximum mass to be used is 10 cc in the perfusion in this line. So that involves almost 10, 10 lakhs islet uh, equivalent numbers. Now pre-procedure medication. So these are in a line to prepare the individual for the transplantation. And that to be started five hours, six hours before to 30 minutes prior to lentitra infusion. This involves antibiotic prophylaxis to uh, anti-IL-2 receptors antibodies, calcineurin inhibitors, TNF receptors, and mTOR inhibitors in a life. Above that, the preparation involves the lentitra preparation also. So lentitra to be kept between to 15 to 25 degree for less than six hours for the time from the product release. And that do not irradiate use lentitra as supplied without further dilution. So pre-infusion patient preparation also involves the prepare to manage any potential complications. That could be hemorrhage, portal vein thrombosis, allergic reactions, glycemic li uh, variabilities and liabilities, as well as bleeding and pain. Hydration of individuals and the lentitra preparation is also in the two bags. So lentitra are cellular suspension as well as a Reins bag to contain the transplant media. In a way, administration to be focused that do not administer with leukodepleting factor, uh, filters. And to optimize viability of this lentitra, it to be uh, possibly to do it as the product release is available as early as possible. So aseptic environment, aseptically environment, radiological suits or the operation theater with five to six French uh, angiographic catheter catheter length to be restricted to 65 centimeters or less and intra diameter of this catheter is much more vital to pre preserve that islet cells to be kept 0.97 mm or greater. Further, this infusion is to be inserted the catheter into the hepatic portal vein and it to be gravitated, not to be pushed or flush. That is what to be kept and that to be over 30 minutes. What are the monitoring we need to take care during the lentitra transfusion? So measure the portal blood pressure, portal pressure. Why that transfusion, if the portal pressure rises above 22 mm of Hg, then to be hold for. Maintain it below 18 mm of Hg and wait for 10 minutes. If that 22 comes to below 18, then transfuse again or hold the procedure. So monitor blood glucose as it is diabetic individual and how that islet cell reacts on transfusion depends on and monitor the patients for portal vein branch thrombosis and if needed heparinizations can be tried for. Now post transfusion, yes obviously monitor this individual for 24 hours if it is done in a proper method or without complications then follow the USG for first day and seven days to look for intra-abdominal uh, aspects or any complications are around. Monitor for glucose, adverse reactions, post infusion medications, anti infective medications as, as well as anti-inflammatories also and non-depleting anti-IL-2 uh, receptor antibodies as well as TNF blocker also. And that has immunosuppression regimes to try for depending on the individuals, uh, their profiles and immunosuppression consultants alignment. Long-term medications, yes, immunosuppressions, but to be make sure we need to take care, avoid systemic steroid usage. Now what are the risk and adverse effects or contraindication associated with? So concomitant disease or conditions are around or pregnancy around, it is strict contraindications. If uh, we have the risk also, also of, uh, transmission of uh, transmission of infection from donor, even the risk related to lentitra infusion or bleeding, portal vein thrombosis and uh, elevated portal blood pressure. Above that, even the risk related to immunosuppressions as immunosuppression will go for lifelong or much more longer duration. That could be opportunities, infections, lymphomas, malignancy, and severe anemia. This is of one of the background. The donor's BMI or cold ischemic time is also one of the risk factor to get the viability of islet cell in the transfusion. 
even adverse reactions. So all transfuse individuals, 90% got severe adverse reactions and that is due to infusion procedures or immunosuppressions. Infusion procedures, liver lacerations, hematoma, hemorrhage, intraabdominal bleeding or elevated portal pressure and even immunosuppression, infections and malignancies. So phase 1 and 2 trials are also seen into these studies and there is a significant hv one c reduction as well as decreased exogenous insulin requirement as well as hypoglycemia reductions also and improved in the time in range. What based outcomes uh, seen were 60 percentage did not require insulin from outside for more than 5 years of life when UIC protocol implemented in Lentidra. Now, what are the other research going through in these clinical trials? So, intraductal glutamine administrations, where oxidative injury during human pancreatic islet isolations. So, isolations where there are plenty of things happening, transfusion where are specific things happening. So, these are like how increased islet cell yield is there, reduce apoptosis of these islets, improved islet cell graft functions, free time to normal, uh, faster time to normal glycemia. It's in the background for different, different aspects to touch, touch upon in Lentidra. There are even the investigator protocols or scores had been developed in North America for manufacturing these islet cells. So there are plenty of institution manufacturing or grasping the donors. But what are the scores to look forward? So there are plenty of uh, scores also implemented. Now the clinical trials or monitoring has been looked forward to five years and 10 years of span, how that is uh, giving the benefit to type 1 individuals. So if we see five-year follow-up patient with type 1 diabetes uh, transplant with allogenic islet cells with UIC protocol, the key outcomes are 100% patients achieved insulin independence after first to three transplants. 60% sustained it to five years and remained insulin independent. 70% maintained positive C-peptide level, improved hypoglycemic scores and hb one c level, and enhanced beta score indicating improved insulin secretions. So these are different different clinical trials available from uh, transplant procedures to retaining the islet cells, yields, and uh, increase the uh, efficiency of these islet cells. Now comparison to other treatments. So we have insulin therapy for type 1, and what it benefits with Lintidra is potential for insulin independence, improved glycemic control, reduced risk of severe hypoglycemia, and the best is enhanced quality of life. So improved quality of life had been seen in this trial for phase three islet cell transplant for over one year and two year in these individuals. So 87.5 achieved severe hypoglycemia freedom at the one year, even significant improvement in DS, DDS, HS, HFS and EQ 5D visual analog scales and improved sustain for first year to second years also. Even long-term outcomes and follow-up, where long-term benefits is improved in the quality of these individuals has been noticed. Even future direction and research could be to optimize treatment potential for combination therapies. So there are exenatides or other immunosuppressions also tried for this research. Even uh, exploration of alternative cell sources also even development of encapsulation uh, encapsulated technologies to sustain that uh, stem cells or islet cells into the individuals for longer duration research into the stem cells derived islet cells or reducing the need of immunosuppression that's in the line and what could be the next steps so this could be worldwide available what the scope around so i am sharing one of the case study where it is showing 10 year uh, ten, over 10 year insulin independence following single allogenic islet cell transplant without T cell. You can scan the QR code for whole uh, PDF of this uh, article and it shows that 35 year old female with situs inverses with type 1 diabetes for 26 years of duration having complicated severe hypoglycemia and recurrent episodes of this hypoglycemia. Treated with islet cell transplant under USC protocol and what A1C they have achieved. Even the article showed how the GAD antibodies have been over the 10 years in that individuals. There are plenty of patients' testimonies available for Lentidra. There, these are the individuals who have been transfused once, twice, thrice, and their longevity for 10 years to 15 years and how they have their quality of life has been improved. So in a short, Lentidra represents significant advancement in type 1 diabetes management, offer new hope for friends with type 1 diabetes with difficult to control diabetes, and continued research and clinical experience will further refine its role in diabetes management. What could be our closing thoughts in a line? So Lentidra has a potential to change the standard of 
care for type 1 friends. How we evolve it, how we manage it, and how we empower it, that is in our hand. Thank you, everyone. Look forward.